Marshal Matt Dillon brings in his man, and what a man, as Gunsmoke follows next on the CBS Radio Network. And KNX, AM and FM, CBS Radio in Los Angeles. It's 6.30. Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke, starring William Conrad story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Parks is a man of many talents, not the least of which is his ability to ride herd on three highly offbeat CBS radio personalities. When Hermione Gingold, Kenny Delmar, and Parker Fenley focus on a subject, there's no telling what direction the funny business will take. Each Monday through Friday, this merry threesome approaches incredibly trivial matters and inflates them to hilarious proportions. If you're not fundamentally opposed to laughing, sample radio's freshest new daytime comedy panel, Funny Side Up, tomorrow on CBS Radio. Another feature in the distinctively different pattern of programming you always enjoy when your dial is set where it is now. <laughs> you know, if you're not careful, Doc, you're going to finish that beer. <laughs> Why shouldn't I finish it? There's no need to get your back up. I just meant you usually don't have time to finish it. More than likely, you get called away before you get your beer half drunk. That's all. Well, I... Oh, yes, well, I guess you're right. I, <laughs> I suppose I've mentioned to you before that some of us have to work at our job. Yes, Doc, you mentioned it. Hello, Matt. Well, Hello, Kitty. Good afternoon, Kitty. Don't get up. I'll sit down with you. All right. <laughs> Well, what's the argument about this? Well, there's no argument, Kitty, but sometimes it's just about as tough to agree with, Doc, as it is to argue with it. Uh, well, either way, it's hard to have a conversation with somebody who doesn't know the difference. Thanks, Doc. I'm not even going to try to understand you two. Can I get you another beer? No, thanks, Kitty. I have to get back. I guess I'll have one, Kitty. Yes, I might have known. Doc? <laughs> uh, uh, over here, Chester. Uh, Dylan, I... Excuse me, Kitty. Doc. Yeah, Chester. Uh, what is it, Chester? Uh, well, it's just a telegraph. Just come in for you. Oh, let me see it. Here you are. Say, you sure was right, suspicion in that gurney, fellow. It sounds like you know what's in that wire. Yeah, sure does. Well, of course I know what's in it. It's my business to know when a prisoner turns out to be a wanted man, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Oh, oh, is that the man you locked up last night, Matt? Yeah, Doc, I sent an inquiry about it. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's wanted, all right. What for, Matt? Murder. Two of them. A Wichita. Wichita, well. Anyway, he won't be bothering you long. Uh, what do you mean? Well, they'll be sending for him from Wichita, won't they? Getting him off your hands? It's not that easy, Doc. I'm going to have to deliver it. Well, come on, Chester. We'll take the afternoon stage. Looks to me as though that team could just about get there by itself, Jim. How about you to drive it? I expect them horses could do it all right, Marshal. They made the run off in the nut. Yep, yeah. Well, the ruts in the road ought to be enough to guide them, even if nothing else does. Yep. Yeah. It don't get no smoother, does it? No, I'll say not. <laughs> Wrong time since you rode with me, Marshal. Well, I'd just as soon not be making the trip this time, either. <laughs> that gurney fella giving you trouble? Ah, no more than usual. 
Chester gets in more trouble than he does. Yeah. How's that? Well, he doesn't cotton to being shackled to a prisoner when there's a pretty schoolmarm riding across the coach from him. <laughs> the kid says I blame him. Well, I tell him he'd have to go slow anyway with a preacher riding right along there, too. <laughs> I guess you're right about that. Yeah. Get up, boy! Come on! Well, I'll tell you true, Marshal. I'm kind of glad to have you riding shotgun this trip. Huh? Are you worried about the gold? Well, there's a lot of money under this seat. I ain't riding easy until I get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, we're stopping here at Hat Creek Station, aren't we? That's right, Marshal. I'm gonna change horses. Good. I'll be glad to stretch my legs. I guess I'll cut Chester loose for a while. <laughs> you better warn the school, Marshal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. Whoa. <laughs> well, I don't see old Miller. Get out, will you, Marshal? I'm going to have to unhitch the team myself. Sure, Jim. Can you help me stop here for a spell, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Come on out. Well, come on out. Well, I can't exactly make it alone. Well, why don't you bring Gurney with you, then? Well, sure, I'll be... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> After you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, here you are, ma'am. Let me give you a hand down. There Thank we go. Thank you Marshal. All right, now, Granny, come on, let's get you over. Excuse me, Parson, you go out ahead, sir. Thank you. Come on, Granny, come on, I want to set this cousin stage all day. You pull them shackles once more, I'll wrap them around your gullet. I'd be worrying about my own gullet by you. All right, that's enough. You'll find coffee inside, folks. Thanks. I'd like some coffee myself, Mr. Dillon. You'll get it, Chester, you'll get it. Here, hold out your arm, I'll take the manacles off. You care I won't be sorry to be free of the likes of him, and that's the truth. If I ever get this near you and I am free, you won't live to complain no more. Mr. Dillon, you ain't gonna let Gurney wander around loose in the stage station, are you? No, Chester, we'll shackle him to the wheel while we're stopping. All right, Gurney, come on. Yeah, you do that, Marshal. You just lock me up good. Well, the two of you together ain't man enough to hold me. Huh? Well, uh, don't you worry about it. Pardon me, Marshal. Yes, ma'am? I couldn't help noticing what you're doing to this man. Now, what do you mean? Chaining him to the wheel. Well, he's a prisoner, ma'am. And he just ain't no good at all, Mr. Randall. Why, he's the worst kind of a thief and murderer. Never mind, no Chester. Good. I know you have to guard him, Marshal, but he's a human being. Well, he's wanted for two murders. Does that mean you have to treat him like a wild beast? Well, I have to make sure that he doesn't get away, ma'am. Well, you could bring him inside out of the sun, couldn't you? I have to think of the safety of the other passengers. And besides, it's not going to hurt him. Marshal Dillon, I believe in the dignity of man. Well, so do I, ma'am. The trouble is, Gurney here doesn't. Everywhere you go, across the country trip or across the street party, you carry the fun with you when you own a Columbia stereophonic high-fidelity phonograph. There's a marvelous selection of seven new portable models in smart new color combinations at your Columbia phonograph dealer from which you may choose. Each one is a masterpiece of design and beauty. More quality, more features, and more styling have been built into these sturdy portables than ever before. How much fun you'll have enjoying all the wonderful new sound of stereo records. Regular records take on new beauty, too, when played on handsome Columbia Portables. You'll be amazed at the big console sound that is reproduced by Columbia Portable Stereophonic High Fidelity Phonograph. You'll thrill to the excitement of Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. And Columbia Portables are economical, too. Prices start as low as $24.95. See them and hear them at your Columbia Phonograph dealer. <laughs> Exactly as you presented the case, Marshal. Uh, how's that, Reverend? There's nobody here. There's no coffee. No coffee? Boy, I never heard of such a thing. I'll, I'll see if I can. Well, there's usually somebody around. 
Now, he may be out with the horses. You ought to take some water to that man out there. Don't worry, ma'am. We won't let him go tonight. There don't seem to be nobody around at all. I don't know where that old man's gone off to. Well, he was here the last time he came through, wasn't he, Jim? Sure he was. He was always out front waiting. Old man Miller never saw nobody between stages, and he made up for it all at once. Like to talk your arm off. He wouldn't be likely to miss a stop on purpose, huh, would he? Not him. Why? Well, I declare it's the truth, Mr. Jim. There ain't no coffee. It's just a little bit in the pot that must have been left over from breakfast, and that is stone cold. Uh, did you look outside for the old man who runs the place, Chester? Well, no, sir, I didn't. He he might could be out back a ways, though. I, I didn't go out there. I was mostly interested in the coffee. Well, I looked out there some. Didn't see nothing. Well, looks like we're stuck for it. All right, come on, Jim. I'll help you round up some fresh horses in the corral. That's about the worst of it, Marshal. Huh? Well, how's that? When I took our team around back to exchange them, there weren't no other horses. Well, I think we'd better take a real look around, then. Uh, Chester, yes, you keep an eye on Gurney here. Jimmy, come with me, huh? All right, All right Marshal. Hey, Mr. Dillon, look, the stage horses. Somebody's running them out of the crowd. The gold. Oh, wait a minute, Jim. Where do we get... Jim, come back! Chester, cover me. I'm going after him. Yes, sir. Stay low, Jim! You heard bad? No. No, they're, they're running yonder toward them rocks. Yeah. One of them run off the horses, and the other two was after the gold on the stage. Yeah, they almost got it, too. I, I got to get it down off the box. Now, you stay right there. I'll get it. They'll cut you down. Now, you stay down. I'm going to run for it. All right, Jim, I got it. Uh, Chester! Yes, sir, Mr. Don. Uh, oh. Yeah, you stay here with Jim while I unlock Gurney from that wheel. He ain't worth taking a chance for. Maybe not, Chester, but like the lady reminded us, he's still a human being. Heat some water, will you? Oh, yes, sir, I'll do that. I saw a good many wounded in the war, Marshal. May I offer my help? I'm glad to have it, Reverend. He caught one on the side. Well, let's get his shirt off. Oh. Oh. Yes, I see. The bullet will have to be extracted. Yeah. Uh, you want to get at this, Reverend? I've never actually operated Marshall. Still, if you need me to do it... No, I'll do it. I guess I'm a little more familiar with bullets than you are. Just tell me how I can assist. Well, it might just help to have somebody in your line of work standing by. Very well. Chester, you getting some hot water? Yes, sir, I am. I'm trying to, but there sure ain't much water there in the bucket. Well, you bring me what you got, then. Yes, sir. I'll sure get thirsty if we have to stay here for long. Well, those gunmen out there, we'll have time to worry about that later. Miss Lorena? Mm. Uh, I think maybe you better get some sleep. I'll watch Jim for a while. I don't mind, Marshal. I'm not tired. No, you go on now. It's getting light and... You need your rest. There was only something I could do for him. There's nothing to do. But wait. I suppose you're right. Please call me if you need me, Marshal. Yes, ma'am, I will. Are you trying to get some rest, huh? I think I'd best get us some breakfast first. Mm, if you're thinking about breakfast, Mr. Ryan, you got another good time. Ain't no food in them cupboards at all. I know that, Mr. Proudfoot, but I have some food I brought with me. You brought some with it? Mm. I always pack a lunch. I'll get it. Uh-huh. Now, let me see. I'll divide it. I 
need some for Mr. Buck. That ain't going to leave you too much. No, but it's better than nothing. Now, let's see. There's the Reverend and the Marshal and you and Mr. Buck and the prisoner. Are you planning on dividing up this little bit of food with him? Well, he's as hungry as any of us. Well, yes, ma'am, but he ain't... Well, I mean, oh, he... I'll take the prisoners first. I brought you some food. Well, now, ma'am, it's mighty nice of you. She's mighty nice. But, uh, I ain't able to eat it with my hands tied behind me. Marshal? Yes, ma'am? I think this man's hand should be untied so that he can eat. I'll, uh, I'm not sure, Miss Lorena. Please, that... Marshal. All right, uh, Chester... Uh, untie his hands, will you? Oh, I sure do hate to do this, Mr. John. I was afraid like you are, I'd hate to do it, too. Don't you worry none about me being afraid of the likely of you. There. Won't hurt my feelings none if you choke on that food. The little lady don't feel that way, do you now? You're entitled to some nourishment. Sure is nice to have you on my side, ma'am. I'm only on the side of what's right. Well... I don't blame you for choosing me over these two. Why, she ain't doing no such a thing. You just keep your mouth shut. Never mind, Chester. Well, you ain't choosing him, are you, Miss Lorenda? I'm choosing the ideas I try to teach in my school, Mr. Proudfoot. No man can be considered guilty until he's had a fair trial. How about that, lawman? Did you ever think of that? Yes, I have, Gurney. I'm just saying I think all law is important, Marshal. Yes, ma'am. And so do I. Money can evaporate with astonishing speed. That's not too surprising, of course. We like our families to enjoy a fair share of the good things of life. But it's also important to save, to ensure a secure future. This is seldom easy to do, this saving. There just seems to be too many immediate demands on our resources. But there are at least two proven ways to make your savings mount at a steady pace. One is called the payroll savings plan. Under this plan, you accumulate dependable United States savings bonds where you work automatically. The other is the bond a month plan, available where you bank. This, too, will pile up safe, secure United States savings bonds for you. The payroll savings plan where you work the bond-a-month plan where you bank. Pick the plan most convenient to you and sign up tomorrow for your future's sake. That's the last drop of the water, Marshal. Yeah. That parceled it out slowly to the driver during the day, but he's burning up with fever. I don't know how long it'll last now that it's gone. Well, I'll go out and get some more. Well, Mr. Dillon, them fellas will pick you off. Going through well, sure as anything. we got to have water, Chester. Hand me the bucket. Marshal, Mr. Dillon. I guess you were right, Chester. Nobody's going to make it to that well. At least not in the daylight. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'll get the water, Marshal. Now, they'll blow you to kingdom come, Reverend. I'm a man of the cloth. They won't shoot at me. Why, them fellas would shoot their own mothers to get at that gold. I wouldn't count on being safe, Reverend. We better wait for dark. Jim Buck may not have that much time. Hand me that other bucket there. Seems to be a hole in the one you carried, Mark. It's not worth the chance, Reverend. A man's life is worth any chance. Please stand away from the door. Okay. Thank you. They shot him before he got out the door. Yeah, come on, let's get him inside. Now, there's two wounded in bad need of water. No, Chester, he won't be needing any. He's dead. Ain't no sense to killing a man like him. Ain't no sense at all. They're not interested in the kind of men they killed, Chester. Well, what do they mean to do, Mr. Whatever more rock. It's got something tied around it. Yeah. 
there's your answer about what they mean to do in this note. What's it say? We got food and water and time to wait for the gold. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. But I don't like my choices. Here's your share, the last bit of the food, Marshal. Oh, oh. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, there's nothing to wash it down with. How's Jim doing? Not well. I'm very fearful for him if we don't get help soon. Yes, ma'am. You and Chester, you've, you've been at the windows for hours. Do you... Do you see any way out for us? No, not right now. In the daylight. But tonight? Well, we had one more man to draw their fire. Maybe I could do it. No. No, things aren't that bad yet. Well, don't you worry, ma'am. We'll, we'll get out of this some way. Go ahead, Marshal. Let her help you. That's about what I'd figure from you. That's enough, Gurney. I'll take around the rest of the food. Chester? Thank you. Here's your share. Thanks. I'll untie your hands. You ain't afraid of me. Well, no. I'm not afraid of you. Well, most folks are. Does it please you that they're afraid? No, ma'am, I guess it doesn't. Take the food. Thanks. You really meant it when you said you'd walk out there to help the marshal. You really meant that. Certainly I meant it. What makes you figure it'd be worth it? Why, because there's a need, Mr. Gurney. There's a badly wounded man. We have to get him out some way. That ain't much of a reason to risk your life. I think it is, Mr. Gurney. Why? I think it's important to be needed. Don't you? I don't know I ever gave it much thought. Chester. Oh, Mr. Dunn. You seen anything moving? That's right. But I wouldn't claim that my eyes was too good by now, though. Yeah. That's been a long night. Mr. Dunn, you think them fellas out there are getting any sleep? I'm not worried about whether they're getting any sleep or not, Chester. Seems like the night's the only chance we got to make a move. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, we've got to get water. I know I can get out to the well and back. Let's understand each other. Marshal, this man is dying. I know that, ma'am. But getting somebody else killed isn't going to help any. Is the gold this important? Couldn't we give them the gold to save a man's life? This man risked his life for it once. It's up to us to see that he didn't do it for nothing. I'm not going to wait. I'm going out there. Now, you listen to me, ma'am. Nobody's going to get anywhere running out there alone. For any of us to have a chance, we're going to have to know exactly where those men are. We'll have just one shot at them if we're lucky. Mr. Dillon, there's Gurney making a break for it. I'll go after him. No, they get you too. Up in the trees, Chester. Get them. I think it's over, Chester. Come on out. All right, Mr. Dillon. I'm coming with you. You didn't need to come, ma'am. It's not a pretty sight. Is he dead? Yes, ma'am. I guess the others are dead, too. What an awful way to end a life. Well, he didn't have much chance of ending it any better. He sure was a fool making a break for it like that. Why, it was certain death. Yeah. I'm not too sure that's what he was doing. What? Maybe he wasn't making a break for it. 
Of course he was. My goodness, why else would he run out that way? To save our lives. Maybe he knew he could by drawing that fire. He was going back to be tried for murder, you know. I know. But you said yourself that a man can't be judged guilty until a court of law finds him so. It's possible that he would have gone free, Marshal. Yes, ma'am, that's possible. So I'd like to think that this was an unselfish act. That he wanted to do one thing with dignity, even if it meant his death. It wouldn't hurt to think that, would it, Marshal? No, ma'am. It wouldn't hurt a bit. Because dignity is something that should never be taken from any man. I have news of a product so new, it's amazing it's here today at all. It's new k Smooth Seal. You say it's new? You say it's new? So it's new. What does it do? Well, it's a fluid you add to your automatic transmission. Automatic transmission. It stops the leaks in your transmission and makes it smooth and quiet. Makes it smooth? Makes it quiet? How can I tell if I should try it? That's easy. Your stop C and you start to go, and you give it the gas pretty good. If you hear a sort of whirring or a grinding noise, if you feel a jerk or jolt or jar, then your transmission just isn't up to par. Grinding noises, jars and jerks. That's how my transmission works. Boys, if that's the case, then you've got a case for new k Smooth Seal. New k Smooth, Smooth Seal? Seal? How will that help? Well, it's made to soften those shrunken seals and smooth out the shifting when there's power on the wheels. If you heard a whirring or felt a jar when you pull away in your modern car, you are a man who needs a can. Just $1.95, and it works while you drive. Anyone here for K-Side Smooth Seal? Hit me. I'm in. If it doesn't do the job, you get double your money back. <laughs> Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. KMOX Radio, the voice of St. Louis, speaks now from the nation's most modern radio studios. Featuring the latest electronic miracle, a pace-setting building for a pace-setting radio station. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. Latest news follows, and Mitch Miller with tonight's guest stars on the CBS. Radio Network. And KNX, AM and FM, CBS Radio in Los Angeles. Ting-a-ling-a, 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 ting-a-ling-a.